Hey, it's Matthew with Pasture Management, and today we want to talk about finishing off your fence with an electric fencing component. Now, you might be wondering, we just installed a premium high tensile fixed knot fence. Why do I need to add an electric fencing component? While the fixed knot fence is the strongest physical barrier you can have, the electric fencing component gives you a psychological barrier that keeps livestock off your fence once they've been trained to it. This will also maximize how long the fence will last. What an electric fencing component also gives you is a permanent source of electricity in order to use temporary electric fencing products such as poly wire, reels, and tread in posts to set up grazing paddocks to implement a rotational grazing system into your operation. So for pennies per foot, you can add the electric fencing component to your fixed knot system and have a fence that'll pay dividends for years to come. Some of the components we're gonna be using to install the electric fencing component are our speed ride in strain insulators, our pasture management systems, 226 USA wood post pin locks, along with our 10 inch outriggers. We're gonna be using our class three double barb staples. You will need a, a drill and preferably about a quarter inch drill bit, and never forget your high tensile wire with your trusty payout spinner. Well, Michael's installing our wood post pin lock insulators, I'm gonna go to the other end of the fence and rig the corner assembly to attach the high tensile electric wire. Getting ready to rig this white corner insulator for our top wire. I'm going to tie what I, I like calling a New Zealand corner knot. Basically, this is under, over, back under. Pull it out, slide it up close so that'll hold. Come back over, and I'm going to twist it. Again, I'm going to go around three or four times. And because of pasture management, we're professional fence builders, we don't use pliers, snap that wire up. A lot of folks think, well, maybe I need to put this through the end, but don't rig it that way. Rig it so you're pulling across the middle of this insulator instead of tugging on each end. So I just come up here, come into it again. I'm gonna go three to four wraps around and I'll show you the trick of me snapping that wire off like I did. I'm just going the opposite direction and I'm leaving enough wire here for leverage. So here we go. Break it off. Now we're ready to run our hot wire. Under, over, under, over. What we're gonna do now is determine where we wanna put our steel outrigger. We are gonna put a 10 inch outrigger on the inside of this fence. It's gonna keep cattle from rubbing or resting on the fence. Also, anywhere around this fence, we wanted to do some rotational grazing. Now we have a power source going all the way around the perimeter of this fence that we can tie onto with our poly wire and we can subdivide this paddock any way we want to. Tying on, we're tying our hot wire onto our end strain insulator. Again, gonna go to the middle of it, hold it so it doesn't twist, man. Okay, here we go. Again, we're gonna go three to four wraps. Not quite as pretty. Watch out, man, I got it. Okay, ready to go. What we're getting ready to do next is install the 10 inch outrigger. This is going to keep our hot wire we're installing at approximately 32 inches above the ground off of our fence. This is an insulator. When you install it, take note that you never turn the open end up towards the elements. Rain, ice, sleet, snow can get in there. It can cause this to freeze or bust. Always turn it up with your open end pointing towards the ground. 
drill a pilot hole about a quarter of an inch in diameter, drive it in, then take one staple and put the staple up higher here, and it's going to hold this outrigger in place. Now that you've installed your wood post pin lock insulator and your offset outrigger insulator, it's time to run the wire through the insulators. Once the wire's been installed, the final step is to tension the wire with a strainer. <laughs> 